What up everyone? Back with another video. This time we are going to get into some some subscription boxes. Sorry, I've been drinking. Uh, so, I, like I said before, the channel, originally my channel was all about subscription boxes and they've kind of gone the way of the dinosaur. They've been uh, kind of folding out left and right, back and forth. All these companies one by one have been fading away. There are a select few left and these are pretty much all that's left, the ones I'm going to talk about or at least the ones that are worthwhile in my opinion. There are some little tiny ones that are out there, but I've kind of tried them all, so I've become quite a connoisseur of the monthly subscription box in the nerd culture. So we're gonna do things a little bit differently. Normally I do my ultimate unboxing and review and kind of put all the boxes from the months head to head and give them, um, put them in order from best to worst. Now, since they're kind of going away a little bit, I'm gonna go through each company and I'm gonna give that company an overall score. So this is a good way to come and reference the video and so you're not going based on the boxes of that month or that period of three months, however long it's been since I've ever recorded a video. I'm gonna go over the overall company and kind of give it an overall score. And like I said before, that the monthly subscription boxes aren't completely going away. I'm not canceling them. They're still gonna be around, they're still gonna show up and I will still touch base with them when they come, whether it's a quarterly or monthly or something like that. But again, the focus of the channel is not going to be about monthly subscription. It's going to be about the things I've been doing, reviews, the nerdy news, and things like that. So without further ado, um, I'll try to keep this pretty short and just touch on a few things from each company, and we'll go from there. Uh, so we have six different companies to talk about, and in no particular order. And I'll just give a brief overview. So we'll go for the first one. This one, this is the Pusheen box, by the way, but the company is actually Culturefly. So this company is responsible for a lot of different subscription boxes out there. I didn't realize that for the longest time, but they have Pusheen box, the Nick box, uh, the World's Finest Collection, which was DC, and they had a Dragon Ball box, all which have been featured on my channel at some point. Those are the four that I've gotten, but they do a bunch of other ones. They do one for The Office, they do one for Friends, they do one for a few different anime, but it's all one company, and that company is called Culture Fly. And I can see the relativity between them now. Now that I know it's one company, I totally see how relative these boxes are and how they do similar things. So I'm going to talk about the company as a whole, because I could go into depth about each box, but I, I won't go too much into it. And essentially, it's uh, overall is that um, they have a lot of exclusive stuff and it's different content, but some of the choices are a little bit odd and obscure. They have a lot of clothing, which most boxes do. Almost all the boxes have some form of t-shirt. T-shirts are very common just because they're so cheap and easy to make. Uh, this box actually has done pretty well at doing like jackets and sweaters, which is cool because that's something different. Most of these boxes won't touch on uh, jackets and sweaters just because they're too expensive. This company does, as far as I know, strictly quarterly boxes. So you would get four of them a month? Yeah, uh, something like that. So that's what they focus on. So it's more of a quality over quantity. But they're also in the higher price region. So they're around the $50, $60 range per box. So if you do the math, that's roughly like 20 bucks a month with, with $20 a month, which is roughly what some of these monthly boxes cost anyway. So it's about the same price monthly, roughly, but you get more quality because they have more time to focus on quarterly boxes and mix it up. Uh, I started out with the World's Finest Collection, and for most of these boxes, it's the same story. It's things that I liked and I enjoyed, but it wasn't something I was crazy about, like DC, for example. I like DC, I like Batman, and I, I like most of the other DC characters but I'm not in love with them. They're, they're not like one of my top fandoms. I'm way more of a Marvel guy or Turtles or things like that. Much more DC is not in the top five. So I liked it, but it just wasn't worth the money and it wasn't something I was insane crazy about. Same with the Nick Box. I like Nickelodeon. I grew up in the 90s. So the 90s Nick Box was stuff I was very, that was very relative to me and had a lot of nostalgia value. But at the same time, it's not like I want to see 90s Nick stuff every day. It's not something that I'm constantly like searching for collectibles for. It was just cool to see. They did the Dragon Ball box, which I am a few huge fan of. That is in my top five fandoms. But they only did two boxes, I believe. I got the last one, which was pretty cool, and they just kind of stopped. I, I don't think they're going to continue it. Maybe it wasn't popular enough, or maybe they just couldn't compete with some of the 
Asian companies that were putting out Dragon Ball boxes? I'm not totally sure. They don't really give explanations. They just kind of stop. And even if you go on the site, most of the time it still says it's available, but you just can't get it anymore, which is a bummer because I liked it. Now the only one left is the Pusheen box, which is actually, I actually really like, oddly enough. I'm not a big fan of Pusheen by any means, but the stuff in there was very fun and very collectible. And the Pusheen stuff is highly collectible. It has a ton of value, surprisingly. It's kind of turning into like, yeah, I don't know if I'd relate exactly to this, but Sanrio, where it's just something that's like cute and adorable, but the stuff is highly collectible. Pusheen's going the same way. That stuff is very collectible and, on and honestly, even if you got this box, you could flip it and sell it very easy if you didn't want it. Now, I do have a problem with this company because I did have a problem with billing with them, and I'll go briefly into that. Essentially, they had a problem billing my card, and I missed out on a few boxes because it's not, no fault of my own. I didn't do anything, but the, they had trouble billing my card, so they couldn't charge it, and by the time they notified me, they had already shipped out one season's box, and they, they wouldn't give it to me, which was really shitty, honestly. And the only thing, I, this may be an assumption of mine, but honestly, I don't think they liked my channel. And here's why. Um, I recently went into some of my subscriptions and had to change my address, because as you know, I bought the new house. And I changed my name from Court Thompson, which is my name, to Beardy Nerd, just because I have a roommate now that we share this house, and it was much easier to change my name so I knew when the mail comes who exactly it was for. Whether it was my legal name, and it was like important documents like bills and stuff, or her name. And if it was Beardy Nerd stuff, I knew it was just collectible. So when notifications came in the mail, we have a mailbox that we use, I knew if it was something important that I needed to get or if it was just collectibles. So a lot of these companies, I changed my name to Beardy Nerd just so I could differentiate when we got notifications. As soon as I did that with this company, my billing all of a sudden stopped working. My cards just wouldn't work. And I contacted them and said, listen, I didn't do anything different, but my all of a sudden my billing's not working. And they're like, well, this is clearly a problem with you. You need to contact your bank. And I'm like, okay, did that, and there was nothing wrong with my card. Change it to another card, still didn't work. Change it to a third card, which I know for a fact I've used with this company, still didn't work for no reason. It just wasn't working. So I went into my account and randomly just changed my name back from Beardy Nerd to Court Thompson and then contacted them one more time and said, listen, this is clearly not my fault. It's a problem on your part. And as soon as I changed my name back, all of a sudden my billing worked. This could be crazy conspiracy theory. I could be completely wrong on it, but I just found it very odd that when I changed my name to Beardy Nerd, it wouldn't work. And then when I changed it back, it worked fine. Could be a glitch in the system, could be nothing, but something worth mentioning. Maybe they just don't like my reviews. Anyway, I've missed out on a lot of these boxes. This is an old one, so I don't have anything to show or anything to talk about. So you won't be seeing any pictures because I haven't gotten the boxes. Because it really is shitty when it's not my fault, and then I miss out on the boxes. That's, that's really not fair to me. So overall, other than that, this company's been fine. So that one issue, so people in the comments, you can let me know if you've had any trouble billing with this. It might have just been me, or maybe it's a common thing. I would really like to know because that would affect the score. But overall, I'm going to give this company a 6 out of 10. Now, this, like uh, I was saying that the price point is in that $50, $60 range. And in a perfect world, like some of the best boxes we've seen, you'll get double your value. So whatever you pay, you're getting double that value in the box. And many boxes have given that. It's proven true in the past. But this one's definitely not. It's, it's nowhere near double the value. But it is worth the value. I'll say that. Depending on which one you get. There are so many different ones. Some are more collectible than others, but you'll almost always get at least your $50, $60 value and a little bit more than that. Not double, but maybe like 30% more, something like that. So it is worth it. And they do try hard to make things in here exclusive. They do make their own figures and they're good about making jackets and stuff like that. But a lot of the things in there are sometimes odd choices. I feel like they lean a little too much on making things exclusive to the point where it lowers the quality just to make it exclusive. So I'd much rather have something that's higher in quality and not exclusive versus something that's exclusive and low in quality. A lot of the figures they put in here are very low in quality. Um, the DC ones, I showed those on the channel for very low in quality, didn't like them. It wasn't a big deal with the Nick box because they're cartoony and Pusheen is so simplistic. The figures they put in this are perfectly in line with the collectibles they have. So it wasn't a big deal here, but when they go for the more realistic DC looking figures, those weren't so hot looking and that's why I get to 6 out of 10. It's worth it and the good thing is you get to pick your 
fandom, so that's good. And they get a little specific, and they have TV shows, so that's cool. Do you want to come up here? Do you want to come up? Come on. Come up here. Come on. Come on. Damn it, boy. Make up your mind. Oh, here comes Wolf. Oh, here's the Wolf. Oh, oh, it's Wolf time. It's Wolf time. It's Wolf time. I know. So, like, oh, like, the, like I was saying, that you get to pick your subscription, so at least you're getting something that you know you're going to like fandom-wise. I don't know why they haven't done a Marvel one. Maybe they haven't gotten the rights, but it seems odd they would do DC and not Marvel. Probably would like the Marvel one and probably would get it. And I've been curious to try out ones like the Friends Box and The Office. I'm a big fan of those shows, so maybe in the future I will switch it up and try some of those out since I've missed so many boxes from this company. But overall, 6 out of 10. Uh, if you see something that you're really crazy about, it hits a specific fandom of yours, try them out. Couldn't hurt. It's only quarterly. But, you know, I wouldn't, like, highly recommend this box. And the Dragon Ball one, which I was looking forward to, they canceled after one box. So that's that's pretty disappointing. Are you going to jump off now? I don't know what you want. All right. Let's move it on down the line. So next we got the BAM box. And they have two that they do, uh, last time I checked, they have a just a general geek one and a horror one, which many companies in the past have done. Horror is very popular. Never tried out the horror one. Looks cool, though. But the, the BAM box in general, they're very clear on what they do. They're focused on um, um, autographs mostly. They get a lot of actors and voice actors and things like that. So you get a lot of autographs, and they do artwork in here, and it's always signed by the artist, which is a very nice touch. I've always appreciated that. That's very cool. Past that, you'll always get a pin. Are you going to jump? You'll always get a pin. The pins have always been really good. They, they're very good about pins. They do very nice quality pins. Past that, you will get usually a prop replica. They're not so much on the... Wolf, do you want me to put you down? Here, look. Why don't you go down this way? If you're going to jump, then jump. I'm trying to do stuff. I'm trying to make a video, and you're ruining it. We don't need puppies in here. So they're not so much on the collectibles. Like they, They've never really made partnerships with like Funko or anything like that to get exclusive collectibles. They mostly do their own things. And the prop replicas are kind of hit and miss. Like Sometimes we'll get like... ID cards or prop replicas of badges or something like that. It's like, okay, a prop replica. But other times we've gotten like jewelry, like we've gotten like necklaces or rings or things like that that are made of metal and they are very nice quality. So it's kind of been 50-50 on the prop replicas. Some of them are really cheap and throw away, but some are very nice. I've kept a lot of the prop replicas over the years. And then again, about the autographs, those are kind of hit and miss too. So you're never going to get anyone like crazy famous. Like you're not going to see like a, a Johnny Depp from Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, that's never going to happen. You're always going to get people that most likely you honestly won't recognize by name. If I threw out the names of pretty much anyone that's been in here, you wouldn't be like, oh, I know that person. But when you see a picture of them or who hear who they've played, you would recognize them. So they are recognizable people, but they're not like household names. Here's the perfect example. One that came in one of these boxes that I was very excited about. And this uh, the little girl that played Morgan Stark. Her name is Lexi, I believe. So it's funny because she, she could probably barely knows how to write, so that's her autograph. But that's really cool. Someone that I definitely wouldn't know by name. If I threw her name out, nobody would recognize it. But if I said Morgan Stark from Endgame, everyone knows who that is. That's the highest grossing movie of all time. Very recognizable character. And she was a very good character in it. She was funny. Like, she played a big part and kind of like tugged at your heartstrings. So absolutely a recognizable character, but not a household name. And that kind of is what it is for most of their autographs. Not super well-known names, but people you recognize. The most of the time, a lot of times they're voice actors, but from very well-known cartoons and actors from some older movies. So just keep that in mind. That's not really a bad thing per se. I keep a lot of their autographs because I do like who they are. But sometimes they're so obscure, like even when they mention who they played, I'm like, eh, I don't really know. So that's kind of hit and miss. And the artwork they have... Same thing, not by super popular artists for the most part. They've had a few in there that I've recognized that are very well-known artists, but for the most part, not super well-known. They've just done some work in there, but at least they're numbered, so there's a little bit of value, and at least they're signed by hand, which makes it quality. So many boxes put in prints that are just like nothing. 
that aren't numbered at all. They're just they're pretty much worth the paper they're printed on. They're useless. They're throwaway. When they're numbered and signed, at least they have some kind of value. And if you wanted to, you could resell it because it is a limited number. So things to keep in mind about that company. Overall, I think I'm going to give this company a 7 out of 10. I have thoroughly enjoyed it. And honestly, I've kept most of the things they've given to me. But because it's not like mind blowing, you're not getting like amazing actors, you're not getting amazing artists, and some of the prop replicas are hit and miss, it's gonna be right around that. It's definitely good, but not quite amazing. Right in the middle of like, okay, and amazing, 7, point, uh, 7 out of 10, I think is pretty fair. And, and Woof. He's, now he's peeing on camera. For fuck's sake, Woof, have some dignity. Stop pissing on camera. So that'll be it for the band box. They've been around a long time, and I think they're going to be around a while longer. I'm happy to keep them around. Um, it, it, the, a lot of the autographs in here I'm going to keep. I'm going to keep this one for sure of Morgan Stark. I think that's great. That's a really cool one. And the, a lot of the voice actors, like they had the voice actor from uh, Donatello from the original 90s cartoon, and I remember Poison Ivy from the Batman cartoon. Pretty cool stuff. Again, not mind-blowing, but enough to keep it around. And it's decently priced, so it's not outside their own possibility. I think right now, it's been a long time since I checked. I think it's $39.99, I believe. I'll have to double check on that. So that was the band box. That's that. Next, the one sitting right in front of me. So this one, we have the Marvel box. One second. I get so dehydrated talking, but I'm drinking alcohol, so it's not helping. All right. If this is the Marvel box, we have another one that's also a Marvel box right here. But we will be talking about Funko on this because this is what it is. It is a Marvel box, but just like with Culture Fly, that was a Pusheen box, but the overall parent company was Culture Fly that just had all these little sister boxes that were out there. Funko used to have a bunch and they still kind of do. So originally they had a Marvel, a DC, Star Wars, and I think there was one more. I forget off the top of my head. And for the most part, they've all gone to brick and mortar stores, gone to Target, gone to Walmart, so on and so forth. This is the only one that is a delivered uh, monthly subscription anymore. And I believe this, I, I think this is monthly still. It's, I think so. And this is through Amazon. That's the only one that'll ship it out to you. That's the only one that's billed automatically. All the rest you have to go into the store and buy. Uh, I believe Target got the DC ones and I think think Walmart got some Star Wars ones, but those are much different. Those you can see what they are. They have them in the store in their boxes, but they show exactly what's in there on the outside of the box. So it's not a mystery box anymore, but still the same idea and concept. These Marvel ones are ones that are complete mysteries and ones that you don't know what's coming before it's shipped out. And most of the time you can't, well, sometimes you can't buy it after it's already out there. Sometimes you can't. Overall, this is the Funko company though. This is what they make. And let me just preface this with, you know, a lot of people don't like Funko. A lot of people that watch my channel aren't huge Funko fans. That's fine, but then you can just brush this aside. This isn't for you. This is for people that obviously would be interested in Funko. That's what this rating is gonna be based off of. If you hate Funko, it's irrelevant. If you like Funko, then listen to what I have to say. Now these Marvel boxes, uh, they've really come down in quality over the years. Back when they just did monthly stuff and they had DC and Star Wars, the quality was outrageous. They had such good quality and exclusive stuff, things you couldn't find anywhere else. It was absolutely amazing. The original box they, this company did had the highest rating I think I've ever given on my channel to date. And now they've come down in quality significantly, but you know, it's still worth it because everything in here is exclusive and it's exclusive Funko stuff. It's exclusive from a very well-known company, which is nothing to shy away. It's things that really have significant value as soon as it arrives on your doorstep. And some of the things that arrive in this box have increased in value tenfold, have been worth an astronomical amount. A few months back, like last year, we got one of the Captain America holding the Molnir, and that thing is crazy expensive now. It was like a hundred bucks in value as soon as it came to my doorstep. So it, sometimes it is like that, but most of the time it's not crazy expensive, but it's things that are worth your time and value. Here's what I'll say about it though, which is very odd. They, they really limit themselves to what they put in here, which I find so funny. So they do these very broad themes, like this one is Infinity Saga and this one's Marvel Zombies, but they really limit to what they have. For example, here's the Marvel Zombies one. So you can't see too well, but you got your Deadpool, Red Skull, and then the decals Magneto, the pin is Gambit, and then the shirt, 
is Magneto, Gambit, and Wolverine. Here's what I find odd that they do very frequently. This is such a broad concept. Marvel Zombies is literally any character. Any character in the Marvel Universe has been a zombie at one point or another. You have a whole plethora of characters at your disposal. Why limit yourself? Why do a decal and a pin of Magneto and Gambit and then on the shirt put Magneto and Gambit? Why do a character twice if there is an infinite amount of characters there? Do the t-shirt with more than three characters, by the way. Do a bunch of them. Or if you're going to do one, don't do one you already did in the box. Why do a pin and then be like, oh, let's put that character on the shirt. Then do a decal. Let's put that same character on the shirt. Mix it up. Do more characters. And the only thing I can think of is that maybe there was a small issue on licensing, but... I, I honestly can't imagine that being the case. Now, don't get me wrong. I like the stuff in here. This is a dope box. I love the Deadpool with the head, and I love the zombie red skull. It's just they they pick such broad themes, and then they get so specific in there. Like, why these characters specifically? Why not more, like, mascotting big-name characters? It's just, it seems like such a random toss-up. And then they almost always do characters twice in the same box. Same with this Infinity Saga. Infinity Saga is the entire MCU. Every character that's appeared in a Marvel movie is the Infinity Saga. But yet, they limit it to a random Captain America in a chair, and then Nick Fury that's disappearing from the snap. And then they have Captain America again on the shirt. Once again, they've done it twice. This one wasn't as big of a deal. They had more variety, but they very often do that, where they do dual characters in there. And it's like, it, either pick a more specific theme so it makes sense, or mix it up for those broad themes. And it's not a big deal, it's just something that each month when I open it, it's always very lackluster. I still like the stuff in there, but it's like, why? Why not mix it up? Why not do a little better? Why not put a little more thought and creativity into it? Not a big deal, just something that always like irks me when I see them. So positive things, overall, it's still good. Everything in here is absolutely exclusive. You can only get in this box. And most of the things that come up very high in value, the pops mostly, t-shirts are worth nothing, pins are worth a little, stickers are worth nothing. But here's the one good thing. I was saying before that most of these boxes come with shirts because it's just easy and cheap to do, but almost all these boxes have very cheap quality shirts where they do screen printed. They'll pick out a cheap Gildan shirt and then screen print it and it's always very awkward and it's uncomfortably fitting and the fabric is often itchy so they're very cheaply made. These, however, the Funko Tees, are actually pretty high in quality. I'm actually a pretty big fan of the Funko Tees. And I'm, I'm, I have thousands of shirts, by the way. I'm very picky about them, and I am kind of stylish, I guess you'd say. I usually get fitted t-shirts. I like things that fit well to my body. And 99% of the time, the, the shirts that come in these boxes are complete crap. I would never wear them. But the Funko ones are actually not bad, as far as the fit. The designs aren't always great. The designs are kind of goofy and shitty a lot of times, but at least the quality is there. So if you do get a shirt with a design you like, at least you have the option of wearing it because it doesn't matter how awesome the design is. If the shirt doesn't fit, you can't wear it. You really don't have a choice, but at least you know these are well-fitting shirts. So when a design does come that you like, you know you can enjoy it and wear it around. So that's the good thing. This is one of the only boxes that has actually like nice quality design shirts because they have their own t-shirt manufacturing company. They're not going through a third party and screen printing. So that's one good thing to note that, again, the shirts aren't worth anything. You could probably never resell them for the most part, but you could wear them so the quality's there. And I was saying before, the pops hold decent value. It's just weird some of the concepts they pick. Marvel's always going to be one of my top fandoms. I love the MCU. I love the TV show. So as long as they keep this box around, I'm going to keep getting it because I, I can't get enough Marvel. I absolutely love it. But that, again, is the general concept for that because the in Target and in Walmart with the Star Wars and the DC, roughly similar concepts. They don't do clothing as much as the other ones, but it's usually one pop figure and a bunch of throwaway stuff where it's a pin and some stickers. The stuff that's in the brick and mortar stores has significantly less value because they make so many more of those boxes to sell in store. There are a lot less of these that are made that are shipped out to people. So that alone makes the Marvel boxes more valuable and the people like it more. So these hold much more value. The ones in store are fun to get if you like it because you can see what's on there. But if you're looking for value and resale value, I wouldn't waste your time on that. 
All right, so that was the fun. Oh, sorry, I didn't mention the score. I, I'm gonna give the Funko box uh, eight out of ten because the things I mentioned, the the quality of the T-shirts. T-shirts are crappy, but the quality is there. Everything's exclusive from a big name company like Funko. The even if you don't happen to like the characters that show up, it's very very easy to resell this stuff and get your money back, no problem. It's not obviously not the goal to resell and make money, but it's just a nice option if you happen to get things you don't like. It's not money thrown down the drain. The only thing that um, isn't really worth money is usually the decals and the stickers. Those are pretty much throwaway, but the pins are decent quality. So. I, overall, I think it's an 8 out of 10. I think they have room for improvement, as I was saying, with the, the concepts and the overall ideas. They could really branch out and do more characters and pick better themes, but that's more just nitpicky. Overall, I'm still happy when this comes. This is one of the only boxes that I'm still excited to see what's in it, and I usually keep a lot of the stuff from there. And if not, I can easily sell it and make my money back, and I'm really not losing anything. So with all those things considered, I will give this an 8 out of 10. But um, the in-store boxes, I would give a little less. I'd probably give those, like, honestly, like a 6 out of 10. It, it's a little bit different. If Funko went back to the all-monthly when they were doing DC and Star Wars, they'd all be 8 out of 10. But the in-store ones are more of a 6. Marvel ones, 8 out of 10. All right, moving along. Next, we have Geek Fuel. So this company, oddly enough, started out monthly and then went to a quarterly system, which I was a fan of, and I recommended for most of these companies. It was much better for them to go to quarterly because it was a quality over quantity thing. That gave them more time to plan things out because when they were trying to get exclusives, it's just too hard to do on a monthly basis. It was too difficult to do. Went to quarterly and now went back to monthly, which I found very odd. Not necessarily a bad thing, but I found it was a weird choice to switch to one and then switch back. So I'm assuming that maybe they couldn't... Um, Maybe they lost money because people didn't want to pay. It came. It was a much higher price. It was in that sixty-ish dollar range, depending on where it was getting shipped to for quarterly, which that's what quarterly boxes cost. But maybe they weren't getting enough business that way, and they suffered a little bit. When they first switched to the quarterly boxes, they were really great. But then it kind of declined a little bit, as I'm assuming they were losing business. Now they're back to monthly, and they they seem like they were able to keep the the quality they had at, after it went down a little. In that monthly subscription so I'm not too disappointed with it they, they've been doing some good stuff and they do get exclusives not a ton they usually just have like one or two exclusive like collectibles in there obviously the shirts are but as I've said a million times shirts always pop up they're always exclusive very easy to make but they've had some good exclusives in here and the things that aren't exclusive seem like they're decently good choices so I, I've been enjoying this box still because I think they really put some thought and effort into it Things they've picked out are things that I honestly would have picked out for myself. And i that's what I've always liked about this company. They just had really good choices. Obviously, the goal is to be 100% exclusive and only have things you can get here. But it doesn't have to be. It's, it's just nice to have that because it gives it value. But as I was saying with the, the Culture Fly, I'd much rather have quality that's not exclusive versus low quality that is. And I think this company recognizes it. They pick some things that they'd like to make exclusive, but they go out and pick things that are of high quality and that thing, things people would want that aren't exclusive, that fit in well. So I've enjoyed that. They did a nice holiday box, and I really like, they gave this little hardcover Die Hard Christmas book, and I think that's funny. Like Things like this where I, I'll, I'm going to keep this book, and I'm going to bring it out at Christmas because I think it's funny. And there's this, been this ongoing debate whether Die Hard's a Christmas movie or not, and it's a funny debate that's been going on, so it's things like that that make me realize that, that they really pay attention to nerd culture. Like, they're out there watching videos and part of the debate, so things that are relevant and good. And they gave this ring that I thought was cool. They had a few different ones. It was a Ghostbusters, like, spinning ring. Uh, the only complaint I had about that, though, was that they didn't ask for sizes, so I have this ring that only fits on my pinky. So I liked that they were giving a ring of good quality. They had a few different options. But I, it was odd that they just kind of gave everyone a random size, which I think was a bad call. So that, that kind of is the gray area of good choice, but bad call because a lot of people might not be able to use it based on the size. But other things like that where I've enjoyed things in there, and even the things I don't necessarily keep, it's things that I like think that, like, oh, that was a good pick, or they designed that very well. I, I thoroughly enjoyed that. So as far as the score on this one, I'm going to give this one a 7.5 out of 10. 
nothing crazy amazing mind-blowing but they've got some decent exclusives in there they've had some quantum mechanics exclusives which is a great company some other companies have they partnered with over the years and little things like books and stuff like that that i really enjoy that i'll keep so i really like this company and i, I haven't seen a significant quality drop since they went back to their monthly price point they they seem like they've been able to keep most of the quality and have it at a lower price point so normally i would recommend they go to quarterly but I, I don't mind that they went back to monthly i think they're doing a pretty good job and i'm excited to see what they do in the future this is one of the few boxes where i just don't know what to expect when i'm getting a funko box is like yeah i'm getting funko shit when i get the band box like yeah i'm getting autographs and artwork i know exactly what to expect for the most part this company you just have no idea and that's part of the thing about the monthly subscription box you want to be surprised it's exciting when it shows up on your doorstep because you have no idea what's in there and this company you really don't the shirts come every month yeah whatever but all the rest of this stuff is kind of a toss-up mix-up and i think they've done a good job at curating boxes so we'll see what they have in the future uh hopefully this box stays around and we'll revisit them in a, a month or two and check back in and see how they're doing so there's that all right next on the list one of the oldest boxes one of the first boxes we ever got probably the first box loot crate they've been around since day one the very first subscription box i ever got was loot crate i'm pretty sure it was the first one i ever reviewed on the channel going back to 2013 which is like almost 10 years ago crazy how time flies but yeah this is one that's been around since the start and they've been through ups and downs left and right this used to be one of the best subscription boxes around, but they've just, quality has just been going down and down in a steady decline for years now. And they used to be great, even though the quality dipped, because they were just one of the cheapest boxes. They were like less than $20 when they first started out, and they gave great stuff. And they used to have partnerships with Funko and Titans and Kit Robot, Quantum Mechanics. They used to have all these cool partnerships, and they pretty much abandoned them all. They've been doing their own exclusives, but the quality is just like barely there. It's very lackluster. And a lot of the things in there are just very odd choices. They're just weird. They're not necessarily bad, but it's just like, why? Is there really a need for this stuff? They always give shirts and the designs are nice, but they're always these crazy colors. Like this, for example, look at this. It's, it's like glowing in the light. This bright yellow shirt that has a design that's like faintly red, but even if you're looking at it, can you even tell what that is from a distance? Like if you zoom in and focus, like maybe, but it, it just is kind of a blur right there. So they have decent design quality and decent quality of shirts, but they always pick these crazy colors where it's like bright red or bright green or yellow. And it's like, who's wearing that? Who goes to the store and is like, oh, I want a bright yellow shirt. Like maybe some girls could pull it off, some but if you're a guy or just like an, a, the average person, like, do you really want a bright yellow shirt? And are you honestly wearing that out other than just being in your house? It's just such an odd choice. And they're almost always like that. And I get it. They're trying to be different. They don't want every shirt to just be like black, white, and gray. I get that they're trying to mix it up. But does it always have to be this like crazy Easter color? They can just tone it down a little bit. Like most of my shirts are those colors, like black, white, gray, dark blue. And I like that, and I'm fine with that. They could do that majority of the time, and every once in a while mix it up, but even still, if you're gonna do yellow, it doesn't have to be like this neon Easter cholo yellow. You could just do like a subtle soft yellow. And I've said that almost every time I've reviewed the boxes. Colored shirts are okay, but do subtle, like this. This is technically blue, but it's like a, a soft navy blue where it's not like stinging your eye when you look at it. All these other shirts are just so gnarly bright, like. Who's wearing these? Like, am I a traffic cone right now? Like, am I worried about being hit by a car or something like that? So I want people to see me when I'm walking down the street? Like, no. Like, do subtle colors. Do something that's reasonable. And if you're doing a yellow shirt, don't do a red design because you can barely tell what it is. So stuff like that where it's just really weird. And they do a lot of things like socks. And socks are fine, but it's just like... It, there's not a lot to it. There's not a lot of design quality here. It, it's just like random squiggles and stuff like that where it just doesn't seem like there's a lot of thought and effort put into it. And some of the collectibles, like they have this one, which is, it seemed like a good one. So the Spider-Man standee. So I'm like, oh, a 3D standee. Like that's kind of a cool collectible. Why don't we check that out a little bit? And then I open it up and it's just kind of weird. So they made a figure that's supposed to look like an action figure 
But then if you look from the side, he's like cut in half and he's like pasted to it. So it, it's weird because they do the standees where it's like a comic cover, but they're like jumping out of it like a 3D. So they're cut in half. So it's like halfway between like comic and 3D artwork. They've done stuff like that before and I get that. But then they also made it look like an action figure. So it's he's already on there. So it's not like he's coming out of the comic cover. They made it look like an action figure, but then cut him in half. Like, why? If you're making an action figure, just make it like a carded action figure and put the figure in there. Instead, and you can even see he has the little creases of an action figure where they would be, but then cut him in half. It's like halfway between standee and halfway between action figure, but they took the worst parts of both and made this like awkward amalgamation of the two of them like what what were you what were you going for there if you were doing a 3d comic art then why make it look like an action figure if you were doing an action figure then why cut it in half and paste it halfway it's again things like that where it's just like it's weird it was an odd choice and i i'm so curious like i want an explanation of what they were thinking for that and it's things they made themselves so if you were going through the trouble to make your own figure then why not like design it well? Why not put some effort into it? And it looks good from a distance. I would have been fine with an action figure this size carded. I, I collect them. I have some over here in the top corner that look like. I have a Spider-Man one that looks very similar to this. And I have some of their standees. Like I have a Todd McFarlane Spider-Man one where it's a 3D comic cover. That's really cool. But it's this halfway thing that just is, is stupid looking and it's honestly weird and I don't really know what to do with it. And I doubt I could even sell it. So... Most of the things I have to say about this company are just along that, where it's like, okay, that seems like a cool item, and I see what you were going for there, but why? Why did you go that weird direction? Why did you make it a neon color? Why did you give us socks with just squiggles on it? Why did you make this halfway, half-size, weird, awkward thing, a small figure that's an action figure that's, a, that's like too many weird things, and that's what I have to say about pretty much everything from this boxing company. That being said, this company is going to get a 4 out of 10. They used to be very cheap, but they've upped their price over the years. They've been up and up and up, and now they're up to the $30, which is the price of the premium monthly subscriptions, but they're not giving quality and they're not giving real effort. And they used to have this really great referral program where I didn't pay for this box for years because every time I referred someone, we got $5. They supposedly still do that, but I haven't seen a dime off of it in years. I've referred many people, but I just think their system isn't working very well anymore and they're just not doing so hot. So I don't know if Loot Crate's going to stick around. And honestly, even if they do, I think I might end up canceling them, which is so sad to say because they've been here since day one. They were the original and they were the best and it's just slowly declined over the years and they're probably putting themselves into debt honestly where I wouldn't be surprised if maybe they have. I haven't really checked in on the company already filed for bankruptcy but I'm not sure and I'm not too excited about it. This is the probably the only box you're going to hear about now that I honestly wouldn't recommend. I don't really have anything positive to say about it. It's not horrible. It's not the worst thing in the world but it's just not really great when I show, see it on the doorstep. I used to be excited and now I'm like, what weird choices are they going to make this time? And it always is something very weird. So that's the Loot Crate Company. It's really sad to see Titans of Industry take a nosedive and really like go that way. But it is what it is. Sad to say. All right. On to our very last box. It's one that I don't have here in hand and it's sad to say. And that is Lutaku. So sadly enough, this company is closing its doors. From what I come to understand, this box isn't closing them permanently, but I don't know that for sure. That from I, they had to stop shipping out to the U.S. because of the quarantine. They limited shipping from other countries. Then they opened it back up. So I guess we did have a time to get it for a while, but I missed out on it. They even did a last box, which was a Dragon Ball box, and I'm so bummed I missed it. I really wanted to get it because that's one of my favorite fandoms. And they did such good Dragon Ball boxes over the year, and it was really fantastic stuff. So I'm really sad I missed the last one. But from the way they worded it, I saw the letter they sent out. And the way it sounded, they're not closing permanently. They have worded it as if they're closing temporarily until more of the quarantine is lifted. So from what they said, it doesn't seem permanent. But that being said... Every subscription box has said that since the dawn of time. Every company that's been shut down, they always said, this is temporary, we're just going to shut down for a little bit, 
it may be bankruptcy but we're restructuring like even in business like they always say that where they file for bankruptcy and say we're just restructuring and it's like well i want to have hope to say they'll come back but almost never does so every box company that's been around collectible geek nerd block they said the same thing temporarily don't worry the site's going to come soon and it just never does and it's sad so I think that's what's going to happen with Lutaku. I'd love to see them come back. They were one of my favorite boxes. They were almost always number one on the charts. They did really amazing stuff, really cool figures. Their pins were amazing. They were um, uh, exclusive to the box, and they were oversized, and they were such detail. And we got really cool stuff from Japan. All these, like, Dragon Ball figures I have, so much of it came from that box. And they did different anime, and the quality was amazing. And I, I really love the stuff. And even if I didn't like it, like there was specific anime they had in there that I hadn't watched before. It was so easy to sell the stuff because it was very valuable quality stuff. It was an expensive box, but it was always worth it. And it was things you, not that you couldn't get here in America, but things you really didn't find much. Things that weren't in any other subscription box. And I thought that was great. So I'm so sad that they're gone. I'm sad I missed out on their last box. So it's very sad to see that a very good company, good quality company, has to close their doors because of the quarantine. It's absolutely heartbreaking. But that being said, this company got a 9 out of 10. They did a wonderful job. They had great customer service. Even though they were in a foreign company speaking a different language, they always responded to me in a timely manner. They always handled things well. They always let us know when things were gonna be late, if things were gonna get shipped separately. They were wonderful about it. They handled their business wonderfully and I, I couldn't have more positive things to say about them. I hope to God that one day Lutaku does pick themselves up over this quarantine and come back to it. I will absolutely be a subscriber again. And for those of you who missed out on it, I'm sorry. Anyone that did get the Dragon Ball box, let me know how it was. I'm very curious about it. Uh, I'll, maybe I'll look up a picture and post that right now. So that's been one of the best companies I've ever dealt with, and I'm, I'm sad to see them go. So overall, a uh, longer video than I always assume it's going to be. But that's it. Those are the remaining boxes that are still around. If there are any boxes that you didn't see mentioned here that you think are worthwhile, I'd love to check them out. I, I'm still open to it. I never was against the subscription box thing. They just they just flooded the market. I knew this was going to happen 10 years ago when I started, that they flooded the market and became too much, and it folded in on itself. The collectible market has the same little up and down, that little ebb and flow that it goes through over the years. About every 10 years, collectibles come really high back in demand, and then the market crashes and everything becomes worthless. Happened in the 90s, happened in the 80s, 70s. It happens just about every decade. It's happening right now with the collectible market is in decline and uh, companies are struggling to stay afloat. So it'll come back again. I know it will. And maybe subscription boxes will come back too. But these companies got to be too much and most of them went out of business. I never changed it though. I, I would be getting all of them to this day if it wasn't for them going out of business. I honestly miss a lot of those companies. So this is what's left. If there's something you'd like to see, let me know. I'd be happy to check it out. Other than that, that's about all there is to say about monthly subscription nerd culture boxes in general. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know if there's something you'd like to see. Other than that, next week we're going back to reviews and maybe some more news videos and stuff like that. As always, I'd love to hear your opinions. Let's get a discussion going in the comments. I'm more than happy to respond and talk to you there. Let me know your thoughts, and we'll see you on the next video. Thank you for watching and supporting over the past decade. I can't tell you how much I appreciate all you fans, all the ones that have been watching me since day one, all the people that still comment. I, I'm so happy to see you, and thank you for still sticking around. Let's build this channel back up, and I'll see you on the next video. Love you all. Peace.